It's Christine Lease with Gap Dynamics, and in this video, we'll review the accounting guidance regarding the determination of an entity's functional currency. <laughs> Topic 830 defines functional currency as the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. It's normally the currency of the environment in which the entity primarily generates and expends cash. Let's take a look at an example. ShoeFly is a Canadian subsidiary of a U.S. corporation. ShoeFly manufactures and sells shoes. They manufacture the shoes at their factory in Canada using raw materials that are purchased from Canadian vendors. ShoeFly determines the sales price for the shoes based on the local competition and sells their shoes solely to markets throughout Canada. What is ShoeFly's functional currency? Based on the facts, ShoeFly's functional currency would be the Canadian dollar, its local currency. In principle, Topic 830 indicates that the functional currency is a matter of fact. And in our example, the facts are pretty straightforward. Although ShoeFly is a subsidiary of a U.S. corporation, it is a self-contained entity integrated within Canada. It generates and expends cash in Canada. As such, the primary economic environment of ShoeFly is Canada. And as we discussed earlier, the functional currency is defined as the currency in the primary economic environment of the entity. However, it is often not that simple. The facts can be complex and will not always result in a clear or obvious functional currency. Oftentimes, management judgment will be required to determine the most appropriate functional currency that best achieves the objectives of foreign currency translation. The FASB does provide a list of factors that management should consider when making the determination of the functional currency. These indicators are cash flow indicators, sales price indicators, sales market indicators, expense indicators, financing indicators, and intercompany transactions and arrangements indicators. While these six factors are specifically listed in the guidance, the FASB was clear that these are not meant to be all-inclusive. Rather, these, or other possibilities, should be considered both individually and collectively when determining the functional currency. All right, so given what we just discussed, here is another scenario for you to consider. So what do you think? If you have an answer, please let us know by inputting your answer into the comments section below this post.